adjusting journal entries. Adjust records directly by increasing or decreasing accounts. This allows you to directly adjust the books and records without changing the individual underlying transactions. Adjusting journal entries are near and dear to my heart as a CPA, as a human. They are amazing. What do they do? A J Adjusting journal entries. They allow you to adjust the accounting record. A lot of us perceive accounting as a balance sheet or an income statement, which is the result of the accounting system. Now we've all been a bit spoiled, luckily with accounting software, to do things quite automatically for us, but adjusting journal entries are still very important to correct those magical software packages or just to do basic adjusting journal entries like recording depreciation. Let's do one for recording depreciation. In accounting, we have our balance sheet, assets equals liabilities plus equity. We have our income statement, revenues minus expense. And we might have a need to record depreciation. Now, I sort of synonymously or interchange the words adjusting journal entry and journal entry as pretty similar thing. In theory, the balance sheet and the income statement can all be created through journal entries. So I have my Learn Debits and Credits ebook to walk you through this as well as an entire video course. But this is more of a practical overview. Adjusting journal entries always employs debits and credits, which are increasing and decreasing transactions. So one, for example, would be to record depreciation expense. So in this case, you'd record it at a specific date and time, such as December 31, 2100. So this would be showing that the value of these tangible assets have been decreasing due to natural wear and tear, like a car, you know, not as good as it was last year as it was this year. Or is it the opposite? Whatever, cars get old, depreciate them, they go down. So we say $5,000, this being debit, okay? Debit expense increases. More advanced accounting topics to do adjusting journal entries. You're not gonna make adjusting journal entry unless you need to record depreciation or do something in advance or unless you're learning about accounting. Highly unlikely if you're just a regular average business owner. However, you should know how accountants are adjusting things in the background or if you want to do a mass adjustment. So you would hit depreciation expense for 5,000, hit meaning just record it, and then you'd have accumulated depreciation for $5,000. So, in this case, you're directly impacting the books and records, balance sheet, you're recording accumulated depreciation of $5,000, and you're having this expense of $5,000. Debits are always going to equal the credits. You can also use it for other types of things that the accounting software might ne necessarily just pick up on its own. Um, this could be um, a bad debt estimation or an accrued wage 
or even let's say the accounting software doesn't somehow pick up that you had a loan or an additional liability to book in. How it's going to work in the accounting world is the entire books and records are all made up of debits and credits and then roll in to what's called a general ledger which has a sum of all transactions or a trial balance. So on this trial balance it's a summary of all the data, all the accounting data and then you can directly enter in these debits and credits so that you can adjust. For example, let's say the auditor said, hey, you got a lot of bad debts that you're not recording. So let's just say we say bad debt expense. Let's say, you know what, we think at least $15,000 is BS. BS as in $15,000 of sales that you recorded um, or not valid. So we take this 15,000 and we also have a 15,000 here. We'll actually call this allowance for doubtful accounts. This is a difficult misnomer, <laughs> difficult accounting language, bad debt expense. We say, hey, take this $15,000 as an expense because we don't think that people are going to collect and the other side we will create a reduction of an AR asset another contra asset you can tell we're in the the deep water here of accounting for the 15,000 now these are a little bit more complicated let's say a little bit less complicated we have a journal entry and in someone's accounting record, they have meals and entertainment, M and me, M and E, for 20 grand. And then the client comes to you and says, hey, you know what? <laughs> this 20,000 is too high. It was actually more like 15,000. Well, as an accountant, what are you going to do? If regardless of ethical considerations or what the government might want you to do. If someone comes in at 20,000 and then they say, hey, you know what? It's actually 15,000. How do you go from 15 to 20,000? In this case, you would do a journal entry. So M and E expense to reduce an expense would be a opposite of what's normal, which would be a credit. So meals and entertainment, we'd reduce an expense by 5000 and then you'd have an offset. In this case, maybe it's this whole prop. It might be a draw account or something. 5K there. So in essence, you're being able to adjust the books manually using journal entries. So sometimes they refer to it as the humble journal entry, but as things get much more complicated, accrual, deferred tax, audit adjustments, auditors come in and they say, hey, look, you can't do that. That's not right. We want the accounts receivable to say 25 million instead of 30 million. You have to do an adjustment and that's all achieved through the journal entries. Extraordinarily important for bookkeeping and accounting in general, but as a small business owner, something to at least be aware of. This has been accountingplay.com. Thank you.